Gambling has been a popular form of entertainment for centuries. And with the rise of technology and the mass legalization of online gambling, it's become even more accessible lately. Let's talk about exactly what gambling is and what it does to our brains. We'll also dive into what problem gambling is and see how problem gambling can ruin people's lives and financial security. Let's explore the dark side of gambling and the chaos it can bring into the lives of those who play too much. So what is gambling? Gamblers Anonymous defines gambling as follows. Any betting or wagering for self or others, whether for money or not, no matter how slight or insignificant, where the outcome is uncertain or depends upon chance or skill. Gambling can take many different forms as well, but it's important to note that not all forms of gambling involve money, and some people are actually able to gamble for fun. I'm just not one of them. There are many different types of gambling, but they can be broadly categorized into four categories. Let's quickly dive into them. First, we have live casino games. These are games of chance that are played in casinos, such as slot machines, blackjack, roulette, baccarat, and poker. This is the standard Las Vegas type of gambling that you'd see on TV. It's been built up to be something that's glamorous and it's filled with a history of great class and fame. Such singers as Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin made the casinos as popular as they were. Today, there's much less of that feel as casinos are a place of sensory overload, where the only goal is to get as much of your money as possible over the long run by giving you some small wins along the way. The next type of gambling is sports betting. This involves placing a bet on the outcome of a sports event, such as a football or basketball game, or even a horse race. This can also be done at many casinos and is a slower paced type of wagering where you're adding a reason to cheer during the game. This is an especially popular type of gambling among men and is becoming more and more prevalent each day. Nowadays, you can't even watch ESPN anymore without seeing game odds flash across your screen. Next, we have the lottery. This is a game of chance where players purchase tickets and hope to win a large prize. Americans actually spend almost $100 billion a year on the lottery for some very slim odds of winning money. In fact, the Powerball lists odds of 1 in 292,201,338 to win. This huge sum of money that Americans spend is more than they spend on books, sports tickets, video games, music, and movie tickets combined each year. The last category of gambling we have is what I believe is the most dangerous type of gambling for myself, online gambling. This includes all types of gambling that we've mentioned already, but they're done online in places such as online casinos, uh, online sports betting apps, and online poker apps. There's now thousands of websites you can legally place a bet on, and there are thousands more where you can bet without actually providing any type of ID verification. In 2021, there was 2.5 times more gambling ads on television than in 2020, amounting to around $725 million. By 2024, this is estimated to reach $2.4 billion. It's safe to say that people will have more access to and know more about gambling than ever before in history. Gambling can be a fun and exciting activity when done carefully and in moderation. But for some people, like myself, it can become a real problem. Let's talk about problem gambling. Problem gambling is a serious condition that can have a negative impact on a person's life, their relationships, and their finances. But what does problem gambling actually look like in the brain? Studies have shown that problem gamblers have a different brain activity pattern than non-problem gamblers. When problem gamblers are shown pictures of gambling-related stimuli, such as slot machines or playing cards, they show an increased activity in the reward center of their brain. This is the same area of the brain that is activated when someone uses drugs or alcohol. Problem gamblers have been found to have less activity in their prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for decision-making, impulse control, and judgment. This suggests that problem gamblers may actually have difficulty controlling their impulses and making rational decisions when it comes to gambling. There's many people out there that say, well, just stop. <laughs> well, let me tell you, if it were that easy, believe me, we would not be gambling. By gambling so much, we have actually changed the physical structure and functioning of our brain. Our dopamine levels and serotonin levels have become so maladapted that the rush of gambling is the only thing that can bring feelings of pleasure. This is the case when you're in the midst of your gambling problem, and I can personally tell you it does diminish with time, but it is not an easy fix by any means. If you or someone you know is struggling with problem gambling, it's important to seek help. There's many resources available, including counseling, support groups like Gamblers Anonymous, and treatment programs. I'm a true believer in the Gamblers Anonymous program, and I've actually made a video about their 12-step program to addiction recovery that I'll link above and in the description of this video. Lasting recovery is possible, but you really have to put the work in. I've been going hard for over 110 days now, and I had eight months under my belt in late 2022 before falling off the wagon. I can tell you that every day that you stay off the bet is a good day, 
and a day that you're giving your brain a chance to find its natural balance. It's important to understand the risks and make responsible decisions when it comes to gambling. If you believe there's any chance that you are a problem gambler, it's really not worth the risk of going ahead and gambling. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and hit that subscribe button as it really supports the channel and gives me the ability to do this every single day. In the meantime, check out these videos I've made on the topics of self-improvement and addiction recovery. And as always, let's keep getting better together one day at a time.